Is Coca-Cola stock a smart buy right now? That's the big question we're tackling today. Welcome to Global Value, and in this video, we're going to dive deep into a thorough analysis of Coca-Cola KO stock. Emulating none other than Warren Buffett, Coca-Cola shareholder, and one of the greatest investors of all time. We'll scrutinize the key numbers that Buffett values most, and then we'll calculate three different fair values for Coca-Cola to really understand what it's worth in today's market. Make sure you stay with me till the end because our combined fair value and rating might just take you by surprise. And there's more. I'll also reveal a crucial bonus metric that could be the deciding factor when adding KO stock to your portfolio. So is Coca-Cola a sweet opportunity waiting to be seized? Let's find out together. Right now, Coca-Cola trades for $57.15 per share. 2023 has been rough on the company. Their stock price is down 9%, while the S&P 500 is up 15%. But there's more for shareholders. Right now, Coca-Cola pays an above average 3.18% dividend yield. Coca-Cola is a time-tested dividend king. It's raised its dividend for 61 straight years. This is extremely impressive. Coca-Cola benefits from global competitive advantages and a recession-proof business model. In the last five years, Coke stock has compounded at 3.5%. In the last decade, this is about the same performance. When we go back before the global financial crisis, in the last 18 and a half years, Coca-Cola is compounded at 5% annually. Their dividends are added to this. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to Coca-Cola? Right now, the company trades smack dab in the middle of its 52-week high and low. They're up $6 from their 52-week low. This is while they're down $8 from their 52-week high. Not many of their shares are sold short. And how big is Coca-Cola? They're one of the largest consumer companies in the world with a $247 billion market cap. You know the name, but what does Coke actually do? Founded in 1886, Atlanta headquartered Coca-Cola is the world's largest non-alcoholic beverage company with a strong portfolio of 200 brands covering key categories, which include carbonated soft drinks, water, sports, energy, juice, and coffee. Together with bottlers and distribution partners, the company sells finished beverage products bearing Coca-Cola and licensed brands through retailers and food service locations in more than 200 countries and regions globally. Coca-Cola generates around two-thirds of its total revenue overseas, with a significant portion from emerging economies in Latin America and Asia-Pacific. Top brands include Coke, Sprite, Fanta, Vitamin Water, and Powerade. It's also been a long-time holding of Warren Buffett's since the late 1980s. Now with that understanding, let's dive deep into their numbers. Now with that understanding, let's dive deep into their numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. A normal business earns 7% returns on capital. When we look for a benchmark that's double this, we can build in margin of safety based on the quality of the company. Coca-Cola's returns come in right around that number. They're in the mid-teens for most of these years. These returns have even grown in the last five years. When they're averaged out, Coca-Cola earns 15.8% returns in a given year. That's a couple percentage points above our benchmark, more than twice as good as a normal business. These stable high returns are exactly what we want to see. It's a check on metric number one. Metric two, we want sales, earnings, and free cash flow growth to support their high returns. In this time, Coca-Cola's sales have grown by 31%, their earnings have grown by 67%, and their free cash flows have grown by 67% up until today. That's big growth across the board. It's great to see their earnings and free cash flows grow even faster than their sales. This means the company's margins are improving and they could experience some operating leverage. They're getting more out of their fixed assets. It's a check with a lot to like on metric number two. In our third metric, we want earnings per share growth. This looks at Coca-Cola from the view of an individual shareholder. In this time, their earnings have grown by 67%. They've also just diluted shareholders by 1%. That's very tiny dilution. Still, we'd prefer that they keep their shares flat or better yet, buy them back when they're undervalued. Either way, with their earnings growth, their earnings per share have grown. It's another check on metric number three. Coca-Cola is perfect so far. What will the rest of their numbers look like? Metric number four, we want free cash flow per share growth. This is almost the exact same as our last metric. Coca-Cola's grown their free cash flows by 67%. This exactly matches their earnings growth. It's yet another check on metric number four. So far through four metrics, Coca-Cola has four checks. Before we look at the company's balance sheet and get into our valuations, how about we check in on our bonus? Right now, Coca-Cola pays an above average 3.18% dividend yield, but is it safe and can this continue to grow in the future? 
That's what we want to figure out through our bonus. Coca-Cola is a dividend king that's grown their dividends in each of the last 61 years. That's an insane track record, only matched by a handful of companies. In this time, we want their free cash flows to fund these dividends. They've supported their dividends using their free cash flows in four of the last five years, each year since 2019. 2018 was an exception. The company supports its dividends today, which is what we want to see. It's likely the company can continue to grow this in the future. This is a check on our bonus. Metric number five, we want their last five years of free cash flow to be above their net debt. In recessions, it's businesses with too much debt that can have the biggest losses and even go broke. Coca-Cola has maybe one of the most recession-proof businesses out there. People are very choosy when it comes to the beverages they consume. In this time, Coca-Cola was adding on debt until 2020. They peaked at around $33.5 billion of debt. Since then, they've been paying this down. They ended 2022 with $30.5 billion. Today, this sits at $26.4 billion. In the last five years, when we add them up, they brought in $44 billion of free cash flow. That easily supports their net debt position. This is a check on metric number five. Coca-Cola brings in a ton of cash compared to the leverage they use in their business. Now, how much is Coca-Cola potentially worth? The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want Coca-Cola's average five-year free cash flow divided by their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. This is the first of our three fair value estimates. It looks at Coca-Cola like it's a private business by adding their net debt and their market cap together. Right now, their enterprise value sits at $275 billion, one of the largest companies in the world. They brought in $44 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. This means in an average year, they bring in $8.8 .8 billion. When we divide that free cash flow by their enterprise value, it gives us a 3.2% average free cash flow yield. Today, Coca-Cola brought in $10.2 billion of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When we divide that by their enterprise value, it gives us a 3.7% current free cash flow yield. These both come in just around or slightly below the 10-year treasury. This is down from the 5% risk premium we wanted. It means all the way on metric number six, this is our first and only X of the day for Coca-Cola. Don't just throw this business out. You're going to want to see what our other estimates are before you stay till the end of the video for their fair market value and our rating, which may surprise you. Everything we've covered so far is important, but there's something missing. This, in my opinion, is the main reason to look at Coca-Cola. It brings us to use a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. This is based on their business predictability. Its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're going to start with a three-year average of their free cash flows then take historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if they'll be accurate or not for Coca-Cola. If we assume they grow their average free cash flows at 6% in each of the next 10 years, then in the following decade, we'll assume these grow at 4%. We're going to add in their book value to give an estimate of their net worth. If we want a market beating 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett looks for from his investments, at today's valuation multiples, an estimate of Coca-Cola's fair value is $27 per share. That's down $30 from their current stock price. Keep some key points in mind. This rate of return already includes their dividend yield. Right now, Coca-Cola trades at 24 times its price to owner earnings. This is below its median value in the last 10 years of 27 times. It's still above its minimum. Be aware that in these last 10 years, Coca-Cola underperformed the market. These high multiples have made it tougher on the business, hence their lower fair value even for a potentially wonderful company. That's a similar story with their P.E. ratio. While this is more basic, Coca-Cola's lowest P.E. was 18 and a half times in the last 10 years. It's hard to beat the market when its historical average is around 15 times and Coca-Cola is trading for a premium. We're also going to take a guru focus value for Coca-Cola. This is based on their business predictability, analyst estimates for the future, and where they've traded at compared to past multiples. Right now, this comes in at around $68 per share. So far, we've looked at most of the numbers Warren Buffett cares about, but it's the qualities of a business that are even more important to him. Let's learn what these are for Coke that made him invest in the company and hold it for more than 30 years. We're going to start with a long thesis. Number one, Coca-Cola can leverage strong bottler relationships in underpenetrated emerging markets to drive volume growth. They can do this with classic recipes as well as new products tailored to local tastes. Number two, heavy investments in a digitalized supply chain and data analytics have better aligned Coke and its bottlers in product planning, manufacturing, and go-to-market strategy. Number three, as Costa recovers from the pandemic-related disruptions, it should help Coca-Cola gain a firmer footing in the coffee category and provide more consumer insights given its global footprint. 
But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Let's look at a short thesis as well. Number one, secular headwinds in carbonated soft drink demand in developed markets are a challenge to Coca-Cola's long-term growth outlook. Number two, the company's brand portfolio and product lineup in non-sparkling categories are less robust, and heavy investments are needed to bolster its competitive position. Number three, with two-thirds of revenues from international markets, Coca-Cola faces constant currency fluctuations that drive volatilities in reported earnings. Now it's the moment you've been waiting for. Let's put their numbers and qualities together as we estimate their fair market value and give our rating. This far in our analysis of Coca-Cola stock ticker KO, we've learned the company has many of the traits of being a wonderful business. They go five for six on our select six analysis. They're just off when we look at their free cash flow yields. Warren Buffett owns Coca-Cola and so do these other super investors. Right now, Coca-Cola is 7% of Berkshire Hathaway's portfolio that shows on its 13F. Buffett first bought Coke in the late 80s after the Black Monday stock crash. He last added to the company in the early 1990s. Still, it's a centerpiece as the fourth largest holding in his portfolio. When we put together all our valuations, an estimate of Coca-Cola's market value is around $44 per share. They last traded at these levels in the market crash of spring of 2020. When we look at everything about the business, Coca-Cola looks like a great candidate for more research. While there may not be the same returns and growth they once had, Coca-Cola is a steady and safe company that can easily be the reliable cornerstone of a portfolio, even Warren Buffett's. If you enjoyed today's KO stock analysis, like it, subscribe to the channel for more, share your thoughts in the comments, and watch this next video.